Agile PM Foundation, Lesson 8, Business Need. I mentioned this common disaster in our projects, and I asked you about your ideas on how we can reduce this problem or completely remove it. One of the ways we can do that, and it works very well, especially when you com uh, combine it with agile systems, is the use of a proper prioritization method. And one of the best we have is the Moscow prioritization, which, it, which belongs to DSDM, but we also use it in other systems. For example, even Prince who mentions the Moscow prioritization. Moscow stands for must have items, should have items, and could have items. A must have item is one that is really necessary for your product. And if you don't have it in your product, you can't even use the product. Think of a bank that wants to create its own mobile application. How do you see security? Can you use the mobile application for a banking system if it's not secure? It doesn't matter how many fancy features you have there. You just can't use it. Or, for example, the regulations. In certain industries, we have to follow regulations. So they are must-haves. The point is that you should never ask the business people or the customer if something is a must-have because they may think that everything is a must-have, but they are not. You should have a conversation with them. Ask them, for example, what if I deliver all the requirements except for this one? Would you be able to use that application? If the answer is yes, then that one requirement won't be a must-have. Then we have the should-haves. If we don't have a should have in our product, we will have a problem. But we can't find a workaround for the problem. That's the difference between a must have and a should have. We cannot find a workaround for the problem caused by lacking the must have. But we can do it for the should have. Maybe we can do it manually or we can uh, use another piece of software in parallel or something else. For example, um, let's think of a word processor. How do you see the feature for editing text? It's sometimes about the nature of the software. If you really want to create a word processor and you don't have the feature to edit text, then it doesn't make sense at all. You can't even use the product, at least as a word processor. So that's why it, that makes it a must-have. What about printing? For me, for example, I don't remember the last time I wrote something I, and I really printed it. I only print things when they send me a form. I have to fill in the form, print it, sign it, or scan it again, and send it to someone else. That's the only time I print. So, for users like me, printing is not a must-have because I can use the software, and I do use the software without using the print feature. But, in certain cases, if I don't have the print feature, I will have a problem. Can I find a workaround? Maybe we can save the file in a generic format and import it in another piece of software and print it there. If that's possible, that makes it a should have. And what about could haves? They are the fancy features. Well, the could haves are those that probably bring value, but if you don't have them, you won't have a problem. Think of all the great features you wish you could have in your word processor. For example, uh, if you spell the same thing differently in two different parts of the document, it can understand it and tell you about it. For example, well, 
in, in the context of standards, DSDF, for example, we capitalize certain phrases. When we say, for example, project manager, project manager is a defined phrase in DSDM. So we use capital P, capital M. But what about cases when you make a mistake and don't capitalize them? Your software won't realize it. It's great if it can realize it with, with, with a really complicated algorithm, but it's okay. That makes it a could have. We have this acronym MUST in DSDM, which stands for minimum, use, minimum Usable Subset. And that's the set of all must-have items. That's the minimum you can have when you want to start using your product. And it's an important concept for us. So, we have the Moscow prioritization. Whenever we have a requirement, we will assign one of the MS or C labels to that requirement. So what? The fact is that when we are using an adaptive system, we start with the most important things because we can. And that's great. We start with the must-haves, and when they are done, we go on with the should-haves and then with the could-haves. What happens here is, when we don't have enough time to complete everything, those things that we have to drop will be the least important items. And that's great. And we do that because of one of our principles. The principle is to focus on the business need instead of focusing on specialist activities or the number of features, the, the amount of man hours spent on the projects, things like that. This principle applies to every project. Most of the principles we have in uh, DSTM and other agile systems apply to every kind of project. Not all of them. For example, not the incremental delivery and iterative development, for example. But anyway, let's talk about it more. What happens in a predictive system is that we are working on a mixture of all requirements. Everything that was specified and identified from the beginning of the project. And we go on and on and develop all of that. And at the end of the project, we will have the full set probably later than expected. And among those features, we will have the 45 person problem. But in DSDM, we start with the mo most important ones, with the must-have items, go on with the should-haves, and if we have time, we will develop could-haves. And if we don't have enough time, when we stop the project, we still have the most important things. And based on the fact that we never have as much time as we want, what we drop here will be automatically that 45%. And that's great. That's why the use of Moscow prioritization in an adaptive system will prevent that 45% problem. I mentioned something here. The duration for the project. How do you feel about this if we have a fixed duration for the project? We always have a target for, for the project, but it's not fixed. We say that, okay, this project should really be finished in six months. But what happens if you don't have enough time to deliver all features? You probably extend the duration of the project and deliver everything. But is it possible to really fix the duration? When we say that the project has six months, we will finish the project exactly in six months not even one day later. How do you feel about something like that? We'll talk about it in the next lesson.